right, you're still tuned in to African Independent Television live broadcast of the laying of the budget by President Bola Tinubu. The President has just stepped in into the makeshift chamber of the House of Representatives where the budget will be laid today by himself. This is the first budget by the President since he was inaugurated. The President uh, has been cited, his executive members of his cabinet, the President of the Senate is already in the chamber. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, is also in the chamber in readiness to receive the President as he lays his first budget of the year. And don't forget that before now, the National Assembly had passed the medium-term expenditure framework and physical strategy paper, the MTEF, which is the parameters on which the 2024 budget is predicated on. There are several recommendations by the National Assembly. Though the National Assembly passed about 26 trillion naira proposed expenditure for the federal government, but the Federal Executive Council have approved 27 trillion naira, which is what the President will be here to lay before the National Assembly. Just to also let you know that there is a procedure before the budget will be passed. After now, the National Assembly will commence proper scrutiny of the budget, the total size, which is projected at 20, 27 trillion naira. Various ministries, after now, will have to defend this budget. We'll also talk about their revenue drive to ensure that um, to reduce the budget deficit of the federal government. Uh, you can see the president, Bola Tinubu, already at the podium as I take the national anthem. Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief, the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Right Honorable Speaker, Distinguished Senators, and other colleagues, members of the National Assembly, the joint sitting of the National Assembly is hereby called to order. We will now proceed to take the prayers. For the Christian prayer, I call on distinguished Senator Igbishaba. I 
And for the Muslim prayers, I call on Right Honorable Abdul Bunini Jibril. You may now proceed. This check has been moving. Let us pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the enablement for us to be in this chamber this morning. We are here for the presentation of the 2024 appropriation. We pray that you give us all the guide and all the wisdom to be able to carry today's activities. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Ya Allah, protect and guide our country. Ya Allah, protect and guide our president and our vice president. Ya Allah, help them to achieve the good intentions and the development programs for the good of our country. Ya Allah, protect and guide the Senate president, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, all senators of the Federal Republic, all members of the House of Representatives, and all leaders across the country, from the top down to the point of counselors and supervisors in our local governments. O Allah, guide and protect our political parties, the APC, the PDP, the Labour Party, the SDP, the ADC, the YPP, and all other parties, but most especially the NNPP. Amen Rasulu bi maunzir alayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minun. Kulluna amana billahi wa malaikati wa rusulihi. La yukallifu allahu nafsan illa usaha. La ma kasabat wa alayha maktasabat. Rabbana la tuagizna in nasina wa atana. Rabbana wa la ta'amil alayna isran kama amaltahu ala alladhina min kablina. Rabbana wa la ta'amil na ma la taqata ala nabihi. Wa afu anna wa gafir lana wa rahamna anta maulana fansurna ala lakawmi lakafirin. Kuli Allahu ma malika al-mulki tuti al-mulka man tashawu. Wa tanzihu al-mulka min man tashawu. Wa tiizu man tashawu. Wa tizillu man tashawu. بيارك هاري نك على كل شيء كدير لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسرة وفي الآخرة حسرة وكنا عذاب النار Your Excellency, the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Distinguished Senator Bola Ahmed Tinibu, GCFR, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Distinguished Senator Kashim Shetimai, GCON. My dear brother, the Right Honorable Speaker, House of Representatives, Right Honorable Abbas Tajuddin, the Deputy Senate President, my brother, Barao Jibrin, and of course, the Deputy Speaker, Right Honorable 
Ben Calvo, my good brother, the excellencies, the executive governors present here with Mr. President, the principal officers of the Senate and the principal officers of the House of Representatives, very distinguished senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and right honorable members of the House of Representatives of Nigeria. May I especially recognize in the President's entourage, right honorable Femi Wajabiamila, the Chief of Staff to Mr. President, and also recognize in Mr. President's entourage, distinguished Senator George Akume, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, members of the Federal Executive Council, the head of the Civil Service of the Federation, the clerk of the National Assembly, members of the Diplomatic Corps. Let me recognize Engineer Ahmad Amshi, Chairman, National Assembly Service Commission, and his commissioners, Alaji Sani Magaji, Tambua, area mention, the CNA, Barisa Kamaru Ogulano, Deputy Clerk of the National Assembly, the Clerk of the Senate here present, and the Clerk of the House of Representatives, the Secretaries of the Directors of the various arms of the National Assembly, the Head of the Security Agencies of the National Assembly, the Head of the Federal Agencies and Parasatas, and of course, National Assembly Management Staff. Invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, and any, if any, oh my God, the national chairman of the greatest party in Africa. Permit <laughs> me to apologize to the national chairman for the breach of protocol. I just turned and I saw his face. Your face cannot be hidden. His Excellency, the chairman of APC, Ganduje of Nigeria, the greatest in Africa. On behalf of the Right Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, the distinguished Deputy Senate President, the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, the distinguished Senate Leader, the Principal Officers of Bunch Chambers, distinguished Senators and Honorable Members of the House of Representatives, I Distinguished Senator Gos Virakwabio, with great honor and privilege, welcome an alumnus of this great National Assembly, our Reformation Ambassador to Asu Rockvilla, the esteemed President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Senator Bola Ahmed Chinibu, GCFR. To the joint sitting of the National Assembly, for this crucial budget presentation session of the 2024 budget estimates. We collectively extend the same sentiments to our esteemed Vice President, His Excellency Kashim Shetima GCON, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, the Chief of Staff to Mr. President, the Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, and indeed all Honorable Members of the cabinet of Mr. President, and of course, other members of Mr. President's entourage share present. It is said that no matter how high the eagle flies, its talons keep pointing to the earth. Mr. President, we know that no matter how high you go rise in life, your heart will always point to this assembly. Mr. President, the United States of America has had democracy for about 247 years. But it was only when it marked its 185th anniversary, 185th anniversary, that it succeeded in produ producing two former senators, John F. Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson, as president and vice president, respectively. But within 24 years of our democracy, we have achieved what took the United States of America 185 years to achieve. <laughs> 
Not only do we have two former distinguished senators serving as president and vice president of our dear country, we also have other alumni of this National Assembly in positions of public trust. The Secretary to the Government, George Akume Siyuen, the Chief of Staff to Mr. President, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, CFR, the former speaker, and other representatives in Mr. President's cabinet. And even for those appointments, we thank Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, distinguished and honorable members, maintaining a cordial relationship with the executive arm has always been a requirement of the law. But now, given that our old boys run the executive, a good relationship with the executive is a must for all of us. <laughs> Never have we had so many bridges and connection points between the two arms of government in Nigeria. So we will continue to work hand in hand and see eye to eye with the executive arm while ensuring that the principles of separation of powers as checks and balances as enshrined in our constitution are observed in the overriding public interest. Mr. President, this is your maiden trip to these hallowed chambers to deliver your maiden budgetary estimates as President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This is a significant milestone in our nation's journey toward progress and development. The presentation of the budgetary estimates sets the course for our nation's fiscal policies and priorities for the coming year. It is an opportunity for us to deliberate, scrutinize, and collaborate in order to ensure that the budget aligns with the needs, hopes, and aspirations of our people. Therefore, the National Assembly bears a great responsibility in the task of reviewing and approving the budget. We fully understand the weight of this responsibility and the impact our decisions will eventually have on the lives and on the welfare of the Nigerian people. It is our duty to ensure that the budget reflects the principles of transparency, accountability, and inclusiveness. Consequently, we will certainly conduct a very thorough and meticulous review of the estimates you are about to present to us. I would also like to express our gratitude to Mr. President for his tireless efforts in driving economic growth, promoting social welfare, and enhancing the security of our dear nation. Your patriotic efforts give us hope. Your antecedents comfort us, while your courage to take decisions motivate us. In our people-focused legislative agenda, we place a strong emphasis on national security, recognizing it as a cornerstone for progress. These challenges demand a united front. We remain steadfast in our determination to work collaboratively with the executive arm and the judiciary to address and overcome the security challenges confronting our dear nation. In this National Assembly, the death of any Nigerian equates a loss of a constituent to one of us. So whenever we lose anyone to insecurity, it is the sound of the ambulance passing by our window. We believe that insecurity can and must be stopped, and it must be stopped by all Nigerians running around and supporting government efforts. We also want to seize this opportunity to appreciate our armed forces for fighting for us and sometimes paying the su supreme sacrifice for our security. And Mr. President, so far, you have taken the right steps, and calm is returning to our dear nation. We need to acknowledge the specific achievements of Mr. President Bolamed Tunibu's administration so far. Those who doubted him initially forgot his track record as the governor of Lagos State from 1999 to the year 2007. 
and Lagos, of course, is the Nigeria's melting pot. They forgot its various economic reforms that helped attract investments and promoted economic growth, improved the, the ease of doing business, promoted business policies, and attracted foreign direct investment, not to mention today's robust internally generated revenue, which it grew, as the governor of Lagos said, from 600 million to today's 59 billion. <laughs> Nigerians strongly believe that with the debt profile of the day today, that you are the man for the job to fix our economy. Already we have seen significant economic reforms, starting with the courageous removal of the petroleum subsidy, which has become an albatross to our nation. We have taken the right steps to unify the multiple foreign exchange markets. We have signed the 2023 electricity bill into an act of parliament, not to mention other good works that we have done. Mr. President, as the removal of the petroleum subsidy caused some discomfort in the nation, you responded with compassion and dollar palliatives to assuage the effects on the good people of Nigeria. We salute you. We, the elected representative of the masses of this country, we have taken note of your responsiveness to governance. We have also taken note that these bold steps taken so far by this government have created some measures of economic discomfort to Nigerians, so we plead for continued support for the government to actualize the long-term benefits of these policies. The pain of today is like the pain of childbirth. When the result of the baby manifests, we will rejoice and will forget the pains of childbirth. However, we hope these budgetary estimates contain provisions to ameliorate the sufferings that the economic measures so far have exerted on our fellow citizens whom we represent. The Tenth National Assembly, under our watch, is fully aligned with the President's dreams for our country. Our plans encompass comprehensive legislative actions that will contribute to nation building, economic growth, and social development. Through strategic reforms, we aim to create an enabling legal environment for sustainable progress and growth. Mr. President, distinguished senators and honorable members, the two chambers of this assembly are the two wings upon which not only the executive will soar, but our country will rise as well. There is some parallel unity between the two chambers. As you can see me and the honorable speaker seated together. This is the way we are. Very recently, the House of Representatives set forth its legislative agenda, and I was the chairman of that occasion. And soon, the Senate will also dole out its own. Both chambers believe that we need to encourage the executive arm to unbundle some of the agencies in Nigeria for effectiveness, and even to merge some of them for government to reduce the weight of uh, expenditure. There are also a lot of overlaps in some of the agencies. We are determined to look into those issues for greater effectiveness. We deem it necessary for our country to go back to agriculture as a way of stopping the overdependence on imported foods and even the overdependence on crude oil. A money economy is putting all our eggs in one basket. It is a risk we have taken for too long and we cannot continue to tempt providence. We also believe that education should be prioritized and, some, and something done to stop frequent closures of schools. If we do not checkmate the brain drain, the drain will numb our brains. This is why we must open the door of education, because when you open the door of education, you close the door of the prisons. We also want to plead with the government to do all within its powers to reduce our high debt profile, which you inherited which you did not cause. But then, the mark of a great leader is that he fixes the problem whenever they exist without complaint. Mr. President, as we embark on this budgetary presentation, let us reaffirm our commitment to responsible governance, fiscal prudence, 
and the efficient allocation of resources for the benefit of all Nigerians. Together with the spirit of unity and collaboration, we can overcome challenges and usher in an era of unprecedented development through reinvigorated revenue generation and fiscal prudence. We will continue to support the war against corruption and collaborate with anti-craft agencies to ensure that we do not continue to lose money that could be used to develop our nation. The 10th National Assembly will always stand with the people of Nigeria, protect their constitutional rights, and fight for their welfare. We are glad that you have these sentiments for our people and we had codified this in the Renewed Hope Agenda. This agenda resonates with us as an instrument the people endorse by voting you into office. Our legislative agenda constellates around it, and we believe its faithful implementation would augur well for our nation and put Nigeria on a new growth trajectory. Mr. President, we reiterate and assure you of the National Assembly's readiness to support the efforts of your administration. Our agenda reflects our dedication to the Nigerian people, and we look forward to achieving remarkable milestones for our great nation under your purposeful leadership. However, from whom much is given, much is expected. We will try to perform the oversight functions, and we expect that this assembly will ensure that the taxpayers' money is used to benefit the taxpayer. In conclusion, we assure you that the proposals you have come to present to us will be diligently considered accordingly. We approach this moment with a sense of duty, unity, and purpose to ensure maximum attention to the review of the year 2023 budget performance and the consideration of the year 2024 budget estimates. We request Mr. President would mandate honorable ministers and heads of agencies to avoid foreign travels during this period of our engagements with them. That will prevent them from dishonoring the invitation of the chambers of the National Assembly. They will promptly appear before our committees to defend their budget estimates. We will not want to wait for them, otherwise we will lose time, and time is not on our hands. As we embark on the journey of reviewing the 2024 budget, let us remember that our actions today will shape the future of our, our dear nation. Together, let us work towards a budget that reflects the aspirations and dreams of every Nigerian citizen, particularly meeting your campaign promises. Once again, the National Assembly salutes you that on your first day of attending the Economic Community of West African States meeting in Guinea-Bissau, they saw that Nigeria is back on the national scene and elected you as the chairman of ECOWAS. Congratulations. So, distinguished colleagues and honorable members, let us at this point welcome the president, a man with track record, an alumnus of the National Assembly, to present his budget estimates. Can we give him a resounding applause? Thank you very much. The Vice President, Senator Kashim Ibrahim Shetima, GCOA. The Senate President, Distinguished Senator Goldswill Apabio, GCOA. Thank you for your beautiful remark. And I'm glad I'm feeling at home, feeling welcome. 
the right honorable speaker, Tajuddin Abbas. The APC National Chairman, His Excellency Abdullah Umar Ganduji. Executive Governors here present, my former colleagues and others. The Chief of Staff. Distinguished leaders and members of the National Assembly. Secretary to the Government of the Federation. My landlord, or our landlord, distinguished Yezam Wiki. <laughs> Other government officials here present, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. In furtherance of my sacred duty and obligations as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it is my honor to be here today to present my administration's 2024 budget proposal. To this joint session of the 10th National Assembly, this moment is especially profound and significant to me because it is my first annual budget presentation to the National Assembly. Distinguished senators and honorable members of the National Assembly, I commend your swift consideration and passage of the 2023 supplementary appropriation bill and the 2024 to 2026 medium term expenditure framework and physical strategy paper. Your prompt action underscores your devotion to economic development and to the greater welfare of our people. It is also highlight, it also highlights your desire to work in close collaboration with the executive branch. We do not serve ourselves. I appreciate you. We must always strive to work together to serve and benefit the people of our beloved country. Once again, I say thank you. Well done. I am here today confident that the National Assembly we continue to work closely with us to ensure that the deliberations on the 2024 budget are thorough, but also concluded with reasonable dispatch. Our goal is for the Appropriation Act to come to effect on the 1st of January, 2024. I trust you will do it. It is by now a matter of recorded history that my first physical intervention as president of this great nation was to end the fuel subsidy regime, which has proven to be so harmful to the overall health of our national economy. The second was to negotiate and subsequently present a supplementary budget to enable my government to fund the items needed to restore macroeconomic stability and mitigate the harsh impact of subsidy removal. The third was to secure a second supplementary budget, this time to enable us to keep our promises to promote national security invest in infrastructure, and provide much needed support to the most vulnerable households in our society. 
in swearing in my cabinet and reflecting on the unique challenges facing us, I invited the ministers to imagine that we are attempting to draw water from a dry well. Today, I stand before you to present our budget of renewed hope, a budget which will go further than ever before in cementing macroeconomic stability, reducing the deficit, increasing capital spending, and allocating allocation to reflect the eight priority areas of this administration. The budget we now present constitutes a foundation upon which we shall erect the future of this great nation. Analyzing prevailing economic environment, economic condition remains challenging both abroad and at home. Despite lingering post-COVID supply and production bottlenecks, armed conflict in various parts of the world, and restrictive monetary policies in major economies, we expect global growth to hover around 3.0% in year 2024. This relative low rate has significant implications for our economy due to our current reliance on importation. The distinguished senators, honorable members, despite the global headwind, the Nigerian economy has proven resilient maintaining modest but positive growth over the past 12 months. Inflation has trended upward, yes, due to the weak global conditions. To contain these rising domestic prices, we will ensure effective coordination of physical and monetary policy measures and collaborate with subnational governments to address structural factors driving in inflation in Nigeria. The budget proposal meets our goal of completing critical infrastructure projects, which will help address structural problems in the economy by lowering the cost of doing business for companies and the cost of living for average person. The Honorable Minister of Budget and Economic Planning will be providing full details of this proposal. Analyzing performance of the 2023 budget, distinguished senators and honorable members, an aggregate revenue of 110.45 trillion naira was projected to fund the 2023 budget of 24.82 trillion naira with a deficit of about 6.1% of GDP. As of September 30th, the federal government's actual aggregate revenue inflow was 8.65 trillion naira, approximately 96% of the targeted 8.28 trillion naira. Despite the challenges we continue to meet all our obligations. So the theme and priority of the 2024 budget distinguished senators, honorable members, permit me to highlight key issues relating to the budget proposal for the next fiscal year. The 2024 appropriation has been themed budget of renewed hope. The proposed budget seeks to achieve job-rich economic growth, macroeconomic stability, a better investment environment, enhance human capital development, as well as poverty reduction and greater access to social security. 
defense and internal security are recorded top priority. The internal security architecture will be overhauled to enhance law enforcement capabilities and safeguard lives, property, and investment across the country. <laughs> Human capital is the most critical resource of national development. Accordingly, the budget prioritizes human development with particular attention to children, the foundation of our nation. <laughs> to improve the effectiveness of our budget performance, government will focus on ensuring value for money, greater transparency, and accountability. In this regard, we will work with more closely with development partners and the private sector to address long-standing issues in education, a more sustainable model of funding tertiary education will be implemented, including the student loan scheme planned to become operational by January 2024. <laughs> a stable macroeconomic environment is important to catalyze private investment and accelerate economic growth. We have and shall continue to implement business and investment friendly measures to sustainable growth. We expect the economy to grow by a minimum of 3.76% above the forecasted world average. Inflation is expected to moderate to 21.5%. Four percent in 2024. In preparing the 2024 budget, our primary objective has been to sustain our robust foundation for sustainable economic development. A critical focus of this budget and the medium-term expenditure framework is Nigeria's commitment to greener future, emphasizing public-private partnership we have strategically made provision to leverage private capital for big ticket infrastructure projects in energy, transportation, and other sectors. This marks a critical step towards diversifying our energy mix, enhancing efficiency, and fostering the development of renewable energy sources by allocating resources to support innovative and environmentally conscious initiatives. We aim to position Nigeria as a regional leader in the global movement towards cleaner and sustainable energy. As we approach COP28 Climate Summit, a pivotal moment for global climate action, I have directed relevant government agencies to diligently work towards securing substantial funding comment that will bolster Nigeria's energy transition. It is imperative that we seize this opportunity to attract international partnership and investment that align with our national goals. I call upon the representatives to engage proactively to showcase the strides we have made in the quest to create an enabling environment for sustainable energy projects. Together, we will strive for Nigeria to emerge from COP28 with tangible commitments, reinforcing our dedication to a future where energy is not only a catalyst for development, but also a driver of our environmental stewardship. Distinguished members of 
the National Assembly. The revised 2024 to 2026 medium term expenditure framework, MTEF, and fiscal strategy, FSP, set out the parameters for the 2024 budget after a, a careful review or development in the world oil market and domestic conditions. We have adopted a conservative oil price benchmark of 77.96 US dollar per barrel and daily oil production estimate of 1.78 million barrels per day. We have also adopted a Naira to US dollar exchange rate of 750 per US dollar for 2024. Accordingly, an aggregate expenditure of 27.5 trillion Naira is proposed for the federal government in 2024, of which the non-debt recurrent expenditure is 9.92 trillion Naira while debt service is projected downward to be 8.25 trillion naira and capital expenditure is 8.7 trillion naira. Nigeria remains committed to meeting its debt obligations. Projected debt service is 45% of the expected total revenue. The budget deficit is projected at 9.18 trillion naira in 2024, or 3.88% of GDP. This is lower than the 13.7 trillion naira deficit recorded in year 2023, which represents 6.11% of GDP. The deficit will be financed by new borrowings totaling 7.83 trillion naira. Strategically, 2.98 billion naira from privatization proceeds and 1.05 trillion naira drawdown on multilateral and bilateral loans secured for specific projects. Our government remains committed to broad-based and shared economic prosperity. We are reviewing social investment programs to enhance their implementation and effectiveness, in particular, the National Social Safety Net project will be expanded to provide targeted cash transfer to poor and vulnerable households. In addition, effort will be made to graduate existing beneficiary towards productive activities and employment. We are currently reviewing our tax and fiscal policies. Our target is to increase the ratio of revenue to GDP from less than 10% currently to 18% within the term of this administration. <laughs> Government will make effort to further contain financial leakages through effective implementation of key financial management reforms. Distinguished Senators, Honorable Members, in view of the limited resources available through the federal budget, we are also exploring public-private partnership, the arrangement to finance critical infrastructure. We therefore invite the private sector to partner with us to ensure that our physical trade and monetary policy, as well as our developmental programs and projects, succeed in unlocking the latent potential of our people and other natural environments, in line with our national aspirations. Distinguished senators and honorable members, this budget presentation will be incomplete without commending the patriotic resolve of the 10th National Assembly to collaborate with the executive on our mission to renew hope and deliver on our promises 
to the Nigerian people. I assure you of the strong commitment of the executive to sustain and deepen the relationship with National Assembly as you continue to consider the 2024 budget estimate with trust that the legislative review process will be conducted with a view to sustaining our desired return to a predictable January to December fiscal year. I have no doubt that will be guided by the interests of all Nigerians. We must ensure that only projects and programs that, I mean, with equitable benefits are allowed into the 2024 budget. Additionally, only projects and programs which are in line with the sectorial mandates of MDAs and uh, which are capable of realizing the vision of our government should be included in the budget. As a government, we are committed to improving the lot of our people and delivering on our promises to them. The 2024 budget has the potential to boost performance promote the development of macro, micro, and small and medium-sized enterprises, enhance security and public safety, and improve general living condition of our people. We have not considered great opportunity coming from mineral, solid mineral and other areas, but I promise you that the recovery is here. It is in your hands to thoroughly look into the situation Being sympathetic with the ordinary people out there who put their confidence on us and rest their hope with your and my family. In closing, I am confident that this budgetary allocation and directives we set Nigeria on transformative path towards a sustainable and resilient energy future, fostering growth economically, job creation, and environmental preservation. It is with great pleasure, therefore, that I will leave before you this distinguished joint section of the National Assembly the 2024 budget proposal of the federal government of Nigeria. <laughs> the title is Renew Hope Budget. I thank you most sincerely for, atten for your attention. May we collectively chart the course towards a brighter and cleaner future for our great nation. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and God bless you all. Thank you very much.